Secret Satan, Chapter 2. Alright, the first chapter was a bit of a cold open. So let's just check where we are. We've got an office Christmas party in a back room of a pub with presents being given out. Most of the people have just been described in shorthand. Man with a beard, woman in a Christmas jumper. But we have two names, a bald man called Radu, who was upset with his present, and a large, rude man called Tony, who ended up dead on the floor of the gents. Oh, and I suggested at the very beginning that this was a murder. I'm intending for this to be a, a fair play who done it to make sure that you, the audience, get all the clues as we go along. This means that you can match your wits against the detective and see if you can solve the mystery before they do, which, to be honest, is slightly unfair because the detective, and I know this for a fact, is an idiot. So anyway, I should explain a few things. I'll start by explaining what a cold open is. A cold open is one of those beginnings of a story, that you get them in Hollywood movies, uh, where you're just thrown into the action without any explanation. There's a bunch of characters you don't yet know, like a group of work colleagues, and they're doing something hopefully interesting, like having a party, and then something unexpected and dramatic happens, like a murder, and that's usually where the frame freezes and the music stops with a record scratch, and the voiceover says something like, I bet you're wondering how we got into this mess. And we cut to one week earlier. Something like that. It's a bit of a cliché, to be honest, but like all clichés, it's overused because it kind of works. It gives the audience a clear idea of the kind of story they're in for, but doesn't spoil too much of it. It sets up a mystery with a load of clues that, that the audience is intrigued by, and it starts everything with something interesting to catch the audience's attention and to make sure that they're going to stick around for all the boring setup and the introduction bit. It's actually a useful way not just to start movies, but a lot of things. Work presentations, for instance. A lot of people will start with a contents page of what they're going to cover, or their bio, or some kind of background. No, start with something exciting. Do the big reveal, the reason for the presentation, right at the start. Don't save it. Do it while everyone's still paying attention. They'll have nodded off by the time you get round to it otherwise, and this way you've promised you're going to be interesting, and they might not nod off at all. I probably ought to explain that too, right? All this stuff about story structure and presentations I keep getting distracted by. Right. Time for the record scratch, freeze frame, one week early a bit. I'm a presentation designer. I make presentations for a living. This is why they tend to be on my mind. I do this in the internal communications department for a company called Mary Mead Marple. Now, I have to admit that this is a bit that I can't in entirely explain because I'm not entirely sure what Mary Mead Marple does. I thought it was some kind of market research, but there have been a whole load of acquisitions and reorganizations and restructurings and I'm no longer quite sure. Of course, I ought to know because I'm the one who has to make all the quarterly reports and board presentations, but they're also full of corporate nonsense, all throughput and EBITDA and salience, that they're absolutely impenetrable if you don't already know what they mean. When I started, I used to try to understand them and rewrite them into actual English that might be comprehensible and useful to the audience, but they'd always get changed back. And I soon realised that nobody wanted them to be comprehensible. The presenters didn't want the audience to know what they were talking about, in case it turned out to be rubbish, and the audience couldn't care whether it was rubbish or not. It's like the Catholic Church doing Mass in Latin, or English barristers using Norman French. The point is not to be understood by the laity. It's just the ritual of the thing that matters, like the Hail Mary or some ancient spell. You've just got to say the right words in the right order, have the line go up and to the right, have the incomings be larger than the outgoings and the brand impact in the target markets be increasing year on year and everyone's happy. The crops will flourish once again, the kingdom will be prosperous and the divine promise of the rainbow shall be splayed across the final slide of the deck. Deck. Uh, that's what we call PowerPoint presentations in the business. I'm getting distracted again. What I'm supposed to be doing is explaining our setting. Mary Mead Marple. One of those massive glass and steel buildings on the fringes of the city of London that's so big you don't see it. There's a cavernous atrium with some bad art and a too small palm tree in it, a marble desk with some bored staff behind it, a wall of elevators, and that's it. You wander past without noticing it at all, without noticing the floor after floor of windows rising anonymously above you, without noticing how the building reaches backwards and over the older buildings around it, folding them into its cold embrace. You certainly don't think about how many hundreds of people must work in such a place. All those little human lives packed in together. All those boring, fruitless days stacked on top of each other. All those ersatz families forced together around open-plan desks, exposed to each other by the bleak, merciless glare of the strip lights. 
How many dead dreams must a building like this hold? How many febrile fantasies? How many poisonous passions? Anyway, it also holds me, fifth floor, right at the back, marooned on one end of a bank of desks, about as far from a window as you can get, but then there's nothing to see out there but a grimy light well full of bedraggled pigeons. If that's where you'll find me, Linus Sweet, presentation designer, team manager, and, for the purposes of this story, detective. <laughs>